Because of its location at the crossroads of the African and Asian continents, Egypt has been an important geographical and political power since the earliest of times. In ancient times, the boundaries of Egypt were the Mediterranean Sea to the north, and to the south, an area known as Aswan. Its eastern and western boundaries were in the high desert on either side of a narrow strip of Nile Valley and low desert. The Nile River, the most important geographical feature in the area, runs the length of the country flowing from south to north. Throughout their history, Egyptians shared a common language, worldview, and international structure, as well as a common territory. Ancient Egyptians had a keen sense of the distinctiveness and superiority of their culture, and they struggled to maintain it. Many of the rituals they performed encouraged continuity with earlier periods of their history that they visualized as ideal. Considering Egyptian society's obsession with immortality, it's not surprising that Egyptian art remained unchanged for 3,000 years. Their overriding concern was assuring a comfortable afterlife for their rulers, who were considered gods. Colossal architecture and Egyptian art existed to surround the pharaoh's spirit with eternal glory. In the pursuit of permanence, the Egyptians established the essentials of a major civilization, literature, medical science, and higher mathematics. Not only did they develop an impressive, albeit static, culture, but while elsewhere lesser civilizations rose and fell with the regularity of the Nile's annual floods, Egypt sustained the world's first large-scale unified state for 3,000 years. Much of what we know about ancient Egypt comes from the surviving tombs. Since Egyptians believed the pharaoh's ka, or spirit, was immortal, they stocked the tomb with every earthly delight for it to enjoy throughout eternity. Wall paintings and hieroglyphics were a form of instant replay, inventorying the deceased life and daily activities in minute detail. Portrait statues provided an alternative dwelling place for the Ka, in case the mummified corpse deteriorated and could no longer house it. Sculpture and paintings followed a rigid formula for representing the human figure. In acres of stone carvings and drawings, the human form is depicted with a front view of the eye and shoulders and a profile view of the head, arms, and legs. The spare, broad-shouldered, narrow-hipped figure wears a headdress and kilt, and stands rigidly with arms at the side, one leg advanced. The size of a figure indicated rank, with pharaohs presented as giants towering over pygmy-sized servants. Since statues were intended to last eternally, they were made of hard substances like granite or diorite. Whether standing or seated, they included few projecting, breakable parts. The pose was always frontal and bisymmetrical, with arms close to the torso. Human anatomy was usually at best an approximation. Egyptian history begins with the unifying of Upper and Lower Egypt by King Menes around 3,000 years BC. The pyramids, the symbol of Egypt for most people, were begun a few hundred years later. The first pyramid was built during the reign of King Zoser. The earliest pyramids had a different design than the later ones. They were called step pyramids, a series of rectangles stacked on top of each other. This early design was based on even earlier tombs called mastabas, a tomb in common use at the time for the wealthy. Zoser's tomb had to be special to reflect his power and importance. So an architect named Inhotep came up with a great and original concept. The pyramid caught on as an ideal tomb and a grand scale monument to honor the dead pharaoh. Beginning about 150 years after Zoser's step pyramid, the three most famous pyramids in Egypt were built in an area known as Giza. Their names are Cheops, Kephron, and Mycerinus. One of 80 remaining pyramids, the Great Pyramid of Cheops is the largest stone structure in the world. Ancient Egyptians leveled its 13-acre site, the base of Perfect Square, so successfully that the southeast corner is only one half inch higher than the northwest. Since the interior is almost a solid mass of limestone slabs, Great engineering skill was required to protect the small burial chambers from the massive weight of the stone above. 
The grand gallery ceiling was tiered and braced, while the king's chamber had six granite slab roofs above separate compartments to relieve stress and displace the weight of the overhead blocks. Built in 2600 BC to last forever, so far it has. It was first believed that slave labor built the Cheops Pyramid, but later written record proves that it was built by free men and not slaves. There's even written record on what these workmen ate. It took over two million giant limestone blocks weighing an average of two and a half tons. And when finished, pearly white limestone covered the face of this 480 foot tall pyramid, making it gleam like a jewel in the desert sun. It is also estimated that the completion time of this pyramid took 23 years, while the average lifespan of a human being was only 35 years. At one time, these pyramids were filled with costly grave goods, as the Egyptians believed in burying the departed with things he or she would need in the afterlife. But it took only 400 years for robbers to figure out how to break into these pyramids. Despite stiff penalties, it was worth it to rob these royal tombs because of the riches inside. Nothing is left in these three pyramids at Giza except for the stone sarcophaguses, or burial vaults. The mummies and the treasures have long since disappeared. There is one royal tomb in which the king's mummy and the grave goods were found intact, the tomb of King Tutankhamun. After several hundred years of burying the king in a huge pyramid which invited robbery, the Egyptians decided on a new solution, burying the king in a hidden tomb far away from the cities. These tombs are the so-called rock-cut tombs, located in an area known as the Valley of the Kings, and the Valley of the Kings is far out in the remote desert. The most famous rock-cut tomb ever discovered is that of Tutankhamun. In life, King Tutankhamun, who died at age 19, was unimportant. Yet in death, and 3,000 years later, he became the most celebrated pharaoh of all. His tomb is the only one to be discovered in its near original condition. The British archaeologist Howard Carter was alone in his belief that the tomb could be found. For six years he dug in the Valley of the Kings, twice coming within two yards of the tomb's entrance. In 1922, he literally struck pay dirt. When he lit a match to peek into the darkness, he saw everywhere the glint of gold. Our knowledge of the magnificence of a pharaoh's funerary regalia comes from Tut's tomb. The contents range from baskets of fruit and garlands of flowers, still tinged with color, a folding camp bed and a toy box, to four chariots completely covered with gold. Indeed, gold was the prevailing decorative motif. Golden couches, gilded throne, gold walls, a six-foot, two-inch coffin of solid gold, as well as the now-famous solid gold death mask covering the royal mummy's face in the innermost of three nested coffins. More than 20 people connected with the unsealing of the tomb died under mysterious circumstances, giving rise to the lurid curse of the pharaoh stories. Such superstitions didn't, however, prevent the King Tut tour of the world's famous museums from attracting more visitors than any other single art show in history. What is Egyptology? A special branch of the science of archaeology, Egyptology reconstructs Egyptian civilization from the huge storehouse of surviving antiquities. Egyptology began in 1799 when Napoleon invaded Egypt. In addition to 38,000 troops, he took along 175 scholars, linguists, antiquarians, and artists. These early archaeologists brought back to France a huge trove of relics, including the Rosetta Stone, a slab of black basalt, with the same inscription in three languages, including Greek and hieroglyphics. For 15 centuries, scholars had studied hieroglyphics uncomprehendingly. But in 22 years, the brilliant French linguist Jean-Francois Campolian cracked the code. His discovery spurred intense interest in ancient Egypt. Early Egyptologists often plundered tombs and temples and carried off artifacts for European collections and perishable papyrus, fabric, and wooden articles that had survived for thousands of years unscathed were destroyed overnight. 
Fortunately, painstaking excavation and scientific examination eventually replaced such heavy-handed tactics. These tombs, each a time capsule of information on the daily life of its occupant, have yielded detailed knowledge of this vanished civilization. The Egyptians believed the Ka, or life force, was immortal. To provide a durable receptacle for the deceased spirit, they perfected the science of embalming. Preserving the body began with extracting the deceased brains through the nostrils with a metal hook. Viscera like liver, lungs, stomach, and intestines were removed and preserved in separate urns. What was left was then soaked in brine for more than a month, after which the pickled cadaver was literally hung out to dry. The shriveled body was then stuffed, the corpse swaddled in layers of bandages, and finally interred in nested coffins and a stone sarcophagus. In fact, Egypt's dry climate and absence of bacteria in sand and air probably aided preservation as much as this elaborate chemical treatment. In 1881, 40 dead king's bodies were discovered, including that of Ramses II, whose dried skin, teeth, and hair were still intact. The 3,000-year-old monarch in whose court Moses grew up was called the Great, and with good reason. He sired more than 100 children during his opulent 67-year reign. Yet, when a customs inspector surveyed Ramses' mortal remains during the transfer of the mummy to Cairo, he labeled it dried fish. Egypt can be understood as a culture which achieved a remarkable stability, enabling the civilization to endure longer than any other so far for more than 3,000 years. Mm -hmm.